everyone, and uh, welcome to the second episode uh, of the uh, coronavirus lockdown slash quarantine um, video podcast series um, as we go through this very strange uh, time. Um, now, you guys know about my passion of um, um, aviation and flying an aircraft, but also its relationship with um, human factors psychology. Uh, this is, uh, in fact, something I like to minor at at university. Uh, now, since last time the episode was on human factors and uh, patient safety, this time I thought I'd enlighten you all um, regarding human factors and pilot performance. So what does human factors have to do uh, with how well pilots fly planes. Um, so obviously this is a bit away from medicine and uh, biology as such, but still keeping the, the, the psychological um, factor, as it were. So let's get right into it then. So have you ever woken up in the morning with the drive and determination to have a structured and productive day but by the time you get up and get yourself ready, you can't really be bothered. Now, this can simply be regarded as laziness or fatigue and may not be construed as significant to many. However, when associated with certain professions, such as the role of a pilot, fatigue becomes much more significant than you may expect. But how significant? In fact, hundreds of lives worth. Human Factors plays a vital role in ensuring the safety of the million or so lives that are soaring above us at any one moment. Now, that's all very well, but what actually is Human Factors all about? What does it have to do with pilot performance? As discussed in the previous episode, the World Health Organization describes Human Factors psychology as the study of all the factors that make it easier to do the work in the right way. And it goes even further by analysing the interrelationship between humans, the tools and equipment they use in the workplace, and the environment in which they work. As a whole, Human Factors examines the relationship between uh, human beings and the systems with which they interact by focusing on improving efficiency, creativity and job satisfaction with the goal of minimizing errors. Error is in fact the most important aspect to this entire topic, particularly its source. Eliminating error is unfortunately impossible, but tracking down its source and stamping on that is as far as we can go. The thing is with humans, as the Dalai Lama put it, is that we are not machines. That, of course, makes us inherently unpredictable, un unlike computers. And whilst we may share a similarity of electrical connections with computers, those of humans render us vulnerable to a few weaknesses. For example, we can be very distractible. We can misperceive and misunderstand, and as such, we make mistakes. So, what relevance does this all have to nailing that all-important crosswind landing? Well, let's go back to the second definition that the WHO provided us with. So the individuals we are working with here are, of course, pilots. The tools are the big metal birds, and the working environment is the cockpit. Now we have to isolate the sources of these potential errors that pilots may make. Fatigue has to be the standout source when considering individuals who may fly multiple sectors a day from the early hours of the morning ending late into the night. The effect that fatigue has on job performance is staggering and as discussed in the, in the previous episode it was found that a prolonged shift can have the same effect of the 0.05 millimole per litre blood alcohol concentration. And this level would, in fact, make it illegal to drive a car. It's not difficult to realise, then, the greatly heightened risk that would inevitably come with operating an Airbus A380, for example. 
This is why pilots operate under such strict rules and guidances. It is entirely possible that nearly 500 lives may depend on the integrity and honesty of one single pilot, and as such, it is vital that they are able to identify when they are not operating at their optimum. It's handy, therefore, that the brains behind the aviation industry came up with a very useful uh, mnemonic, I'm safe. Illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and emotion. So, are you ill? Are you taking any medication that may affect your performance? Are you under the influence of alcohol? Are you tired? Are you feeling... Um, angry or sad about something personal that may distract you from the task at hand. Asking these questions before slipping on that uniform significantly improves the chances of pilots catching themselves if one of these factors steps out of line. Whilst it is of course vital to be able to deal with a developing problem, when hundreds of lives are at stake it's always better to avoid the problem in the first place. How then do aircraft manufacturers avoid contributing to the inevitability of erring? Well, let's transport ourselves to uh, the airline pilot's office. Now, however intelligent and capable pilots are at their jobs, it's always better if the flight deck is as easy to understand and operate as is possible. This includes the software in the computers and the ergonomics of the controls. Every button and switch should be placed in a logical location that is easy to access in an emergency. Speaking of emergencies, in fast-paced and developing situations such as an engine fire or hydraulic failure, it is not at all difficult to forget or miss out crucial steps in dousing such a situation. This is where we implement one of the main error reduction strategies, of avoiding reliance on memory by using checklists. Checklists, whilst stemming from aviation, are being utilised in an array of different industries. Now, medicine, of course, is one of the most recent and significant sectors to introduce checklists into their common protocols, such as before commencing an operation and when admitting a patient to hospital for the very first time. Checklists provide a step-by-step -step logical and focused method of ensuring the most important steps and procedures have been completed. Now despite the presence of so many tools to reduce the likelihood of our captains turning off a fuel pump rather than the fasten seatbelt signs, such errors that may seem so trivial are still made today by even the very best aviators. As the title of the book written in 2000 by the US Health Committee puts it, to err is human, and indeed it is. As the WHO pointed out earlier, human factors has the goal of minimising error rather than simply eradicating it. The way we are able to respond to information we have acquired and interpreted varies significantly and as such we are inherently limited by the capacity of our working memory. On the other hand, this unique feature of human beings does allow us to have creative, imaginative and flexible qualities, and we are, on the most part, extremely self-aware. We can recognise when we are not at our optimum, and flying an A380 certainly relies on our, cap uh, our capability of uh, doing so. And since air travel still stands as the safest method of transport, I think we seem to be getting the hang of it. So thanks for listening to that. I hope you enjoyed it and find, found it uh, interesting. Um, if you are in my class on the Teams chat, then do put something on there if you'd like to request uh, a topic for me to uh, to cover. But uh, I hope that uh, um, me delving into the world of aviation enlightened you somehow and you learned something uh, new and, uh, and interesting. So next time you... Uh, uh, fly, um, um, take a flight rather, goodness knows when that might be, but the next time you do, um, just think about all of these things that, uh, that have been going on behind the scenes um, 
whilst pilots uh, are doing their all-important training. It's incredibly complex and fascinating at the same time. So thanks again for watching, and uh, yeah, I hope you found that interesting.